everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rosie and I graduated from the University of Oxford that I'm going to be talking about in this video in 2019. If you haven't seen part one and two of this video, then they will be linked in the pinned comment. You should go and watch those because I think they're the weirder traditions. You know, I, I thought of them first. So they're the, they're the better ones that you might have seen pictures of and got very confused about. So go and watch those first. Now we're going to have part three. Yes, there are even more weird traditions. <laughs> Number one is May Day or May morning. Now May Day happens every single year at Oxford. It's just a strange thing. May Day is a 500 year old tradition. It starts at six o'clock in the morning at Magdalen Tower. So this is Magdalen College. The tower is what well, you can see there is a tower. The choir of Magdalen College stand at the top of this tower and they sing. They sing a hymn called Hymnus Eucharisticus. I have actually never watched this happen because I haven't been able to get myself up early enough or stay up late enough to witness it. In 2017, 27,000 people turned up on the high street just past Magdalen Bridge to watch the choir sing. They sing with the sunrise and then they go on to sing more songs and then I think the Dean of Magdalen gives a speech and then all day there's like Morris dancing and little events going on around town and it's just a generally really lovely atmosphere. This tradition isn't just a university tradition though it is obviously led by Magdalen Magdalen College. It is for the whole town and the students who are there and the staff. What is more of a student-y thing is the night before May Day. The tradition is basically to go out all night. Yeah, I've never managed it. <laughs> the clubs are open so much longer than normal. They normally close around three absolute latest, but on this night they're open till 6 a.m. so that you can literally go straight from the nightclub to the choir. Like I said, I have never managed to last the whole night. Some people do. For various reasons. Um, I've only even gone out on May Day once purely because the other times I had things going on. So in first year, I think I actually vlogged this exact day. I had a rowing outing at seven o'clock the next morning. So I didn't go to May Day. What I could have done is gone to May Day on the way, but it's in the complete wrong direction and I wasn't ready to give up on my sleep. So I've actually filmed me walking through town and being very confused as to why there's so many people and then realizing it's May Day. In second year, I lived pretty much next door to the nightclub so I went but then I couldn't face walking into town at 4 30 a.m so I went to bed. A lot of people will go out for a bit, go home for like two hours to sleep and then go out but I, I just could not bring myself to to do that. No thank you. And obviously third year is by exams so I did not do it in third year. But that is May Day. Number two is the annual tortoise race. This one's really weird, I know, but in, I think it was 2018, eight different colleges came to compete. The colleges that compete have a college tortoise. So I know for a fact St. Peter's has a college tortoise. She is called Aris Turtle. There is another one, I don't know what college it is, but they have a tortoise named Tortellini. This tortoise race is held at Corpus Christi every year and they just have a whole day of like a tortoise fair and it raises money for charity. So in 2018 there were eight tortoises like I say it was held by Corpus Christi and the money raised which was £3,718 went all to homeless Oxford. So it is a really nice charitable day unfortunately. Again I've never been, why have I not done any of these traditions? I really should have. Looking back on it now, I think I focused too much on the work and forgot to actually do fun things, but ho hey, hey ho. Number three is cringy, but a lot of fun. Um, croquet cuppers. Now if you're thinking, oh, Oxford is one of those places where they, they just play croquet and drink wine all day, then I can't even deny it. You're not wrong at all. 
because it is. Every year they have a croquet cuppers and what cuppers means is a tournament between colleges. So every college can submit as many teams of three or four. I think it's three plus one reserve for the croquet tournament every year. Before this, most people have never played croquet before. So it's, it's a bit of fun. Some people take it seriously, but it's like an ironic series from my experience. I've, I did it once in third year and I didn't actually play any games because I was the reserve. I put myself on the reserve because I had no idea what I was doing. I just remember them setting up the croquet kit. Like every college has their own croquet kit and I think every college has a croquet lawn, whether it is usually used as a croquet lawn or not. Like it is specifically made for croquet. I know, weird. But we set it up and then two teams will play against each other. I remember them trying to explain the rules and in, out. I still don't know how to play, I still don't know the rules. I'm not even sure most of the teams do know the rules. But anyway, I think I've got a picture. Yes, here's a picture of us playing croquet on the lawn. Um, but that happens every year, so it's a tradition. <laughs> Number four is one that I actually did not know about until this year because I saw pictures of people sharing it. So at Lincoln College and I think Brazos College as well, but we're gonna talk specifically about Lincoln College today, right now, is Ascension Day. Now Ascension Day isn't a college specific thing, that is a Christian celebration to do with Easter. I'm not religious, so I had never heard of it before, but it is an actual thing. At Oxford, what is weird is that every year some people i assume from the church will walk around the old church parish edges with a big i think it's a birch branch and they mark out the old parish border <laughs> uh, i've never actually seen it happen i don't think maybe i have and it would just subconsciously didn't even notice it because oxford has such odd things happening all the time but as well as this, at Lincoln College, they throw pennies from the tower for children to catch. I know that. <laughs> Apparently, in the olden days, the point of this was <laughs> they threw like burning hot pennies from the tower to teach children about greed. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore they're no longer burning hot pennies they're just pennies there is a blog i've put some screenshots of it this is from taken from that oxford girls blog but it tells you all about it and i'll link it in the pinned comment but one of the reasons that lincoln and brazenos are key in this is that they have an adjoining door so this adjoining door is only open on ascension day every year and that is because there's a big college rivalry which apparently stemmed from a town and gown riot in the 1400s or even earlier than that maybe the 1300s and apparently this riot happened and they were two students being chased by an angry mob and they got to the door of lincoln but the porters there would only let the lincoln student in so the brazenose one was killed by this angry mob and nowadays they still won't open the adjoining door unless it's on ascension day which is i assume when this happened you can read all about it in this post number five is graduation now obviously graduation in itself is not a weird tradition it's graduation every single university has it but i think the way oxford does graduation is a very odd way of doing things i have filmed this whole process of graduation and explained it in a separate video again pinned comment but here is a tiktok that i made about the process in one minute so i'm just gonna let that play so, at Oxford graduation you wear the cap and gown like normal, but you do not go in your hood. We have to hand them in before the ceremony, and we're not allowed to put them back on until we've been like officially accepted as a graduate. Graduation happens in this building, this is the Sheldonian Theatre, it was designed by Christopher Wren in the 1600s. Inside it looks like this, we're all sat around, kind of in a circle. If you want to check out the YouTube video which explains this whole process in full, then it's on my channel, go and do that if you want to. So basically for about 45 minutes we sit around listening to Latin that, well, at least I didn't understand. Clearly you can tell from this picture I have no idea what's going on. 
Then they read out your name in groups and you walk to the front without your hood. I still have no idea what's going on. So you go up to the front, you do a little bow without your hood, and then you have to go outside and get your hood put on. You have to say the words do fidem, which basically means I accept the terms of the university, then you bow again, here's me bowing at the wrong. So as you saw, the graduation at Oxford is a very strange process that nobody doing it really understands. I'm not even sure the staff quite understand, if I'm being honest. There's a lot of Latin, a lot of Latin, and a lot of floaty gowns, a lot of beautiful photo opportunities, amazing scenery, amazing buildings, and I absolutely loved it. It was the perfect way to finish at Oxford, the most Oxfordy, Harry Pottery way of finishing Oxford. And then I also went around and took pictures in the colleges for his Christchurch. I'd never been into these areas of Christchurch before, so. That was exciting and that is the end of the third installment of this series i'll i think the deeper the deeper i dig the weirder the traditions are actually gonna get because there'll be college specific ones which will be even stranger so i think part four will be really interesting anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one on friday bye